Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is part of the serpent, uh, Serpents in the Bible playlist. And uh, I don't remember what part it is. Some of my other studies I put in the playlist because they were already covered. I hate covering the same material so I just took those and put them in the playlist. Please remember that I am on BitChute, B-I-T, one word, second word, shoot, C-H-U-T-E, as in you fall down, a, a trash goes down a trash chute, not AR-15 chute, you know, that not that kind, so. BitChute, they are peer-to-peer, they do not have any censorship that I know of. Uh, perhaps you know about the peer-to-peer. -peer. What was it? Uh, I, I forget. The music sharing services that they used to have, you know, uh, 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was. They were peer-to-peer. -peer. It wasn't decentralized. It was decentralized. It's not a central computer like YouTube is. So... Even if they knock off one computer, there are other computers that will take up the slack and host your video. So I'm just hoping that um, if I get knocked off the tube, you'll come visit me on BitChute. All right, let's take a look. This is going to be on Isaiah chapter 27. I'm going to probably just make that this one chapter and then close it out. It's so much easier to do uh, shorter studies than the longer ones. So, all right. In that day, verse 1. In that day the Lord, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Levithion, the piercing serpent. Even Levithion, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Let's break this down. Is there a day that the Lord's going to come with a, a great and strong sword? Oh yeah, at his second coming. And he's going to publish, uh, punish Levithion, the piercing serpent, even Lev Levithion, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Well, who is Levithion, the piercing serpent, a crooked serpent? You ever hear people say, oh, that politician, that lawyer, boy, they're as crooked as they come. Well, guess what? That, that's, I think that's exactly what it means. So who's this serpent? Let's take a look. All right, who is Levithion? I'm beginning to think that Levithion is another name for Satan, or perhaps it is his proper name. I could look it up in the uh, Hebrew, what it actually means, but you know what? I don't trust the modern Hebrew dictionaries and the modern Greek dictionaries. The King James translators had extraordinary knowledge of what the words meant the modern Bible, Bible study helps are owned by wicked people. I mean, did you know that Zondervan, the largest publisher of Bibles in the English-speaking world, is owned by Rupert Murdoch, a Jew of Fox Television, the News Corporation? He's an antichrist. I mean, let's face it. He also, his companies, HarperCollins, another subs which owns Zondervan, prints Gabe Horn and um, the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan, authored by Anton LaVey, another Jew. So, isn't that wonderful? The Church of Satan was founded by a Jew. Isn't that wonderful? And People, when I point this out, they call me anti-Semitic. Well, what can I tell you? All right, Revelation 12, 9. 
Oh, and if they don't, uh, if if Jews don't want to be uh, associated with evil, let them turn away from their evil. That's what I say. See, they they hate being exposed in the light. They hate for their information to be made public. Revelation twelve nine, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Oh, okay. Leviathan, the uh, serpent. Oh, okay. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. That old serpent. Hmm. Called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 20, verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay, so is that making a little bit more sense? Isaiah chapter 27. In that day, the Lord with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. I think this is not talking about a, a snake in the water. I think this is talking about Satan himself as figures of speech. Well, let's take a look. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 17. What's the water? Revelation 17. All right, Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth on many waters. So when you go to Isaiah 27, they're talking about the serpent. They're talking about the dragon that is in the sea. What are they talking about here? Well, let the Bible explain the Bible. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-covered beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. That's purple's the color of royalty, people. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, if you want to know who Mystery Babylon is, I got a... An entire Bible study on Mystery Babylon the Great. Bible only. Nothing else. I let the Bible interpret the Bible. Go do a search. Type in Chaplain Bob, Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon. You'll find it on YouTube. Or BitChute. I think I loaded it on BitChute. I'm not sure. I've got 200 videos on BitChute. I've got over 900 on YouTube. So, got to have a backup plan. Verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was... And is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. 
Do you know that Judas Iscariot was called the son of perdition? It means to fall, to go into apostasy. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Boy, I tell you what, I, I lose listeners because I believe in election. Well, guess what? And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you know there's peoples whose names were not written in the book of life from the beginning of this world? Well, what can I tell you? And yet there are people whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world. Okay, when they beheld, behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is, and here's the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And guess what? Rome is not the only place that has seven hills or seven mountains. There's a number of them. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. The Bible explains to you. Haven't you ever seen the Jehovah's Witness uh, picture of the beast? And they got this red-colored beast, and it's got all these horns. They're idiots. That's not what the Bible's talking about. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. They're people. They're not horns sticking out of a, a dragon's head. It's a figure of speech. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb. We're not talking about a four-legged animal that goes, bah! we're talking about the Lamb of God who comes back in fury with a great sword. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Psalms 58, verse 10, real quick. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance of, he, he who, the Lord, he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Trust me, people. When, when the tribulation starts and the wicked start killing all the Christians that won't deny Jesus, they're going to long, they're going to beg for the Lord to return. And the righteous shall rejoice. When he seeth the vengeance, he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter 17. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. See, those that are with, the, that, that are, you know, the Lamb, uh, Jesus is the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Oh, yeah. And those that are with him are the called and chosen and faithful. That's Christians, people. That's not the Antichrist over in the Middle East that hate Jesus. And they're called. What do you think? There's a, what's another word for call? You know, when you're called and chosen and faithful. You're talking about election here. Not everybody's the elect. That's just the way it is. Verse 15. And he said unto me, the waters 
The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. What? Wait a minute. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 27. In that day the Lord with his sword, I mean his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Levithion, the piercing serpent, even Levithion, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Huh. Revelation 17, 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The beast that rises up out of the sea? What do you think it's talking about here? People, multitudes, nations, and tongues. The world, people. The sea is the world. 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Like I say, look up my Mystery Babylon study. If you don't know who the great city is, Mystery Babylon, check it out because you know what? Almost nobody teaches the truth. They'll tell you it's Rome. They'll tell you it's Mecca. It's not, people. It's not. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a little taste. Revelation chapter 11. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. Measure the temple of God. Where do you think they are? Rome? Is the temple of God, was it ever in Rome? No. Is the temple of God in Mecca? Uh, no, not unless you're a Muslim and you're a follower of Islam and you love Muhammad. No. Where's the temple of God? It was built in Jerusalem, people. Rise and measure the temple of God in the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, same word as nation, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city. What is the holy city? Rome? Only if you're, unless you're a Catholic and you believe the Pope. What's the holy city? Mecca? Uh, I say no. I'm not a follower of Muhammad. I don't believe Islam. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not a Freemason either, contrary to what some people are saying. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy, prophecy, a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. 42 months and 1,203 score days is the same period of time. Okay? These are the two olive trees. Who? The two witnesses. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. What does a candlestick do? It gives off light. And if any man a man, if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. They will call down fire from heaven, just like Elijah did. I did an entire Bible study on Elijah. It was an hour and 45 minutes long. You want to, Elijah called down fire from the sky and burned up a captain and his 50 soldiers that were trying to arrest him. Yeah. Fire is going to come out of their mouth. Their mouth is not going to be a flamethrower, okay? If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, 
he must in this manner be killed. So when somebody shoots a, 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 a bullet at him, they're going to be killed in that manner. If somebody tries to cut, kill him with a knife, they're going to be killed with a knife. These have power to shut heaven. That's what, that's what Elijah did for three and a half years under King Ahab. Check out my Elijah Bible study. It's, it's worth doing. I mean, it's all Bible. It's very little commentary, very little of my opinion. I mean, I'm, you may not know it, but I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to teach the Bible. I know that every word I utter, I'm going to have to give an account to the Lord. I'm afraid to teach false stuff. I, I don't want to go to hell. I mean, I deserve it. I mean, I was pretty wicked for about half my life. I broke all the Ten Commandments. All of them. I'm not proud of it either. Yeah, I aborted one of my kids. At least one. I was... I'm very humbled that the Lord would show me forgiveness and mercy and you should be the same you know it's just you know the lord jesus said judge not lest ye be judged but he's talking about you know somebody that smokes a cigarette condemning somebody that drinks i mean you know king david uh committed adultery with his neighbor's wife uriah and then had Uriah murdered to cover up the crime. And yet the Lord forgave him. I mean, it's, you know, prostitutes can come to the Lord. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled that the Lord would even consider using a vessel to even do these things. I'm, I'm afraid to teach false things and I'm afraid to stray too far from the Bible these have the have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy just like Elijah did and have power over waters to turn them to blood just like Moses did and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will I tell you what it's going to be pretty hard for the Jews to call these people false prophets when when they can call fire out of the sky when they can turn the water to blood when it doesn't rain to smite the earth with any plague that they wish they're going to have a hard time saying well what what happened in 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 the days of Moses when the magicians were called before Pharaoh let's take a look all right, let's take a look in the book of Exodus. I did an entire chat, uh, Bible study on the plagues of Egypt, the book of Exodus, and compared them and contrasted them to the plagues in the book of Revelation. You know, I got a lot of stuff in the playlists, uh, a lot of stuff, and it follows a fairly decent order. I'm going to be sad when YouTube finally deletes my uh, account, but... Hey, it's all in the Lord's hands. Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house and into thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thine ovens and into thy kneading troughs. In other words, not only their their cooking, their cook you know the cooking ovens and uh, where they they make their bread. You know, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine you're you're trying to your pots and pans you're getting ready to cook and you there's frogs in it. I mean, e. No thanks. And the frogs shall come up on both, up both on thee and on the, and, uh, and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying to Aaron, 
Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause the frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. I mean, let's face it, people. If somebody went to uh, President Trump and said, you know, the Lord, thus saith the Lord, do this. And uh, he says, if you don't do this, well, all the, uh, there's going to be frogs everywhere, you know. And the White House chef is cooking a meal and, or getting ready to cook a meal. And all there's frogs all over the kitchen, all over the living room and the bedroom and the beds, uh, everywhere. I mean, you know, there's a good chance he'd probably pay attention to what's going on, right? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying to Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with thy rod over the, over the streams, over the rivers, over, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments. Chant. You ever see people chanting? Enchantments. What does it mean to enchant? It means to cast spells. These were sorcerers. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Well, big deal. The devil can mimic a lot of the same things that God does. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. Liar. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when, I, when shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they may remain in the river only? And he said, and he said, Tomorrow, and he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. See, Egypt had a bunch of gods. They had Ra, the god of the sun, Osiris. Um, I, I, I did a study on it. I could name a few of them, but, you know. All right. Uh, all right. And, uh, and the frog shall depart from thee and from my houses and from thy servants and from thy people. They shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out in the houses, out of the villages and out of the fields. And they gathered them together together upon heaps. So can you imagine having a house full of dead frogs? I mean, you know, it'd take you, what, a day or two or three to gather them up and pile you know, heap the pile. And the land stank. Oh, yeah. A bunch of dead frogs, man. That's going to stink. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, oh, yeah. When Pharaoh saw that the, the, the danger was past, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Didn't, the, didn't Pharaoh lie he said oh yeah i'm gonna let your people go when this goes away well now he hardened his heart and he's hearkened not unto them he's not listening as the lord had said and the lord said unto moses say unto aaron stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land that it may become lice lice throughout all the land of egypt and they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, I don't remember ever having lice, but I tell you what, I've heard people say that they, it itches. Can you imagine being covered with lice? Okay, here we go. Here's the point. Verse 18, and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice. I mean, that's stupid. Somebody shoots you in the foot and you're going to say, oh, well, I can do that. And then you shoot yourself in the other foot. I mean, why would you do that? Big deal. The magicians in Egypt 
brought forth frogs. I mean, that's just making things worse. Okay? Verse 18, And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. Oh, yeah. The, the, the saucers, the witches, they tried to do the same thing as Moses and Aaron, but they couldn't. So there was lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magicians said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. So these are the kind of things the two witnesses are going to be able to do if that's what the Lord wills. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto, them, say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies. Disease-carrying flies, right? I will send swarms of flies upon thee and upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thy houses and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground wherein they are. And I will sever, means it's going to cut. He's going to divide. He's going to make a difference. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. Oh yeah, Egypt's going to be full of flies, but the land of Goshen where the Israelites were, nothing. Even though they're right next door. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end, thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and in, into his servant's house and into all the land of Egypt. And the land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. Liar. Huh. Where else is the finger of God writ mentioned? Exodus 31, 18. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Deuteronomy 9.10 And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone, written with the finger of God. On them was written, according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the, in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, in the day of the assembly. Interesting, huh? I think it is. All right, turn to the book of Luke, chapter 11. Jesus had just cast out devils. Okay? And they accused Jesus of ha having performed his miracles by the power of the devil. That, my friends, is the unpardonable sin. And there's a lot of Jewish rabbis that teach this in their holy book, the Talmud, which is a commentary on the Bible. They, a lot of rabbis will teach that Jesus performed his miracles by the power of Satan, the devil. You ever wonder why Jews can't hear the gospel? If that's what they believe and teach, well, guess what? That's the unpardonable sin. There is no forgiveness. I did an entire Bible study on the un uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit or the unpardonable sin. I forget how I titled it, but write me a, a comment and I'll, uh, I'll find it for you. But Jesus said... Now, after these Jews accused him of casting out devils by the power of the devil, Beelzebub, Jesus said in verse 18, 
If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if I by Beelzebub, which is another name for Satan, by the way, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I with the finger of God, but if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. All right, so let's go back to Revelation chapter 11. Um, verse 6. These, the two witnesses, these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So flies, frogs, whatever they decide to do, the Lord's will, they're going to be able to do it as often as they will. And when, excuse me, and when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Where are these people? Uh, they're where the temple was, remember? In verse, in verse 1, And there was given me a reed like a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Arise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that dwell, worship therein. Yeah, we just read that, Revelation 11. Read verses 1, 2, and 3, and you'll see these are, they're in Jerusalem, people. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the, of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. There's your hint right there, the great city. Where was the Lord crucified? Where? Not by who. Where? Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Oh, yeah. Now, people will argue and, you know, oh, well, you know, the Muslims, the Muslims killed Christians, so it's Mecca. Uh, I don't think so, unless the Christians are your Lord. Well, you know, the, the Romans uh, executed Jesus. Well, they carried out the sentence, but the, uh, the Jews were the ones that convicted him in their trial. If you don't believe me, read Matthew, read Mark, read Luke, read John, read the Gospels. I mean, Pilate, Pilate didn't want to crucify Jesus. He tried to let him go three times, and then they're going to blame Rome. Rome was guilty of much. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not a Catholic. I don't follow the Pope. I preach against the Pope. But I tell you what, Jesus was not crucified in Rome. Unless if your Lord was crucified in Rome, you got the wrong Lord. My Lord was crucified in Jerusalem, on the place of the skull, Golgotha, which is Jerusalem, people. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer or allow and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear Fear fell upon them which saw them, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the, self, uh, and the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrightened and gave glory 
to the God of heaven. And guess what? There is going to be a remnant. They're going to be frightened and give glory to the God of heaven. They're going to realize, wow, Jesus was telling the truth. These two witnesses that pointed to Jesus are, were telling the truth. Jesus is the Messiah of Judah and Israel. But it's going to be a remnant. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 27 and close this out. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great sore and great and strong sword shall punish Levithion, the piercing serpent, even Levithion, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. In that day, sing ye under her a vineyard of red wine. Did you know that God said that Israel's his vineyard? Okay, Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Did you catch that? For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Back to Isaiah, verse 2. In that day sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. Fury is not in me. Who would set the briars and thorns against me in battle? I would go through them. I would burn them together. Oh yeah, when the Lord comes back in his fury, it's going to be fire, people. Or let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me, and he may make peace with me. And he shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. Hath he smitten him as he smote those that smote him? Or is he slain according to the slaughter of them that are slain by him? In measure when it shooteth forth, thou wilt debate with it. He stayeth his rough wind in the day of the east wind. By this, therefore, shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged. What does it mean to purge? It means to cast it away. You know, the iniquity, the wickedness of Jacob, who's Israel, by the way. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. By this, therefore, shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged. Now, how is that? In Christ, your faith in Christ and what he did on the cross. That's how this happens. And this is all the fruit to take away her, his sin. And he maketh all the stones of the altar as chalk stones that are beaten in sunder. The groves and the images shall not stand up. Yet the defensive city shall be desolate and the habitation forsaken and left like a wit, wit wilderness. There shall the calf feed and there shall he lie down and consume the branches thereof. Where the boughs thereof are withered, they shall be broken off. The woman come and set them on fire, for it is a people of no understanding. Therefore, he that made them will not have mercy on them, and he that formed them will show them no favor. You know, those that reject the Lord are going to, uh, he's not going to have mercy on them. These people. These preachers that teach that the Jews can reject Jesus Christ and they're going to get saved anyways, they're liars. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If anybody tells you that the Jews have a different covenant. They're calling Jesus a liar. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So, back to Isaiah 27, and verse 11. Therefore, he that made 
them will not have mercy on them, and he that formed them will show them no favor. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown. And they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. What's the, uh, the trumpet? The last trump, people. That's going to be the trumpet. We're going we're gonna to be gathered from one corner of the earth to the other. And that's the name of that tune. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.